highlighting conservationists in agriculture. Our next guest is a freelance journalist who's been profiling farmers and ranchers across the country through her Conservation Nation video series. We welcome to the program Gabriella Hoffman with the Committee for a Constructed Tomorrow. Thank you so much for being with us, Gabriella. Give us a little background on yourself and, and your work. Hi, Tammy. It's great to join you, and I'm happy to share my work. So as you mentioned, I'm a freelance journalist, and I'm also a multimedia specialist. In addition to my work with the Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow, I'm also a senior fellow with the Independent Women's Forum Center for Energy and Conservation, where we highlight ranchers and farmers with respect to conservation practices and policies and their work as private stakeholders. But uh, as uh, your viewers may see, I'm a little removed from farming myself. The, the last person in my immediate family who was a farmer was my late maternal grandfather. He was a farmer in what is now modern day Lithuania. It's a Baltic country, very prosperous country. But at the time he was a farmer, it was occupied by both Nazis and Soviets. And his way of surviving imprisonment in a gulag was largely because he was a farmer and knew how to use the skills he learned prior to his imprisonment in different labor camps to survive. So I'm a little removed, but I'm very proud, you know, to have that heritage in my family. And I appreciate the contributions of farmers and ranchers. And I think it's important to highlight them as stakeholders in conservation decisions today. Right. I love the history. I love that story there about your grandfather. Now, tell us a little bit more about your work with the Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow. Yes, so CFACT is billed as a free market environmental organization, and they tapped me a few years ago to create a series to highlight positive conservation contributions and to kind of demystify, uh, let's say, misconceptions about different conservation stakeholders. I like to uh, differentiate true conservation from preservation, which is, I believe, unfortunately attributed to conservation. So I try to deconstruct and separate the two notions of environmentalism. I think conservation is a more palatable form of environmentalism. It incorporates stakeholders like some of the ranchers and farmers you're featuring here uh, playing over my uh, segment. And I, I think conservation is extremely important. It doesn't get its proper due. People misconstrue what it is. Like I said, preservationists, environmentalists uh, who don't welcome the contributions of farmers, ranchers, hunters, anglers, energy workers, and other key stakeholders who make uh, American conservation a success. You need multiple parties, you need multiple people involved. And so I thought it would be prudent to highlight these people who often don't get their due, who often are misrepresented and highlight what they truly do, how they power the country, how they feed the country and how their land stewardship practices with respect to farmers and ranchers really do make land, water and all these wild spaces better. There has to be a cohesiveness between the two. They shouldn't be at odds with one another. And I think highlighting ranchers and farmers, for instance, is extremely important to paint a, perf or a rather accurate narrative of what true conservation practices are. And, and they fit very well into this model. It is very, very wonderful that you can help share their story and get that accurate story out there as well. You've even briefed members of Congress on conservation issues. Did you see any type of correlation or discrepancies compared to your conversations with the farmers? No, I regularly meet with members of Congress for both CFACT and the Independent Women's Forum, as I alluded to earlier, and they're appreciative of seeing, you know, a young person like me, like I said, who's a little removed from farming and ranching directly, but I have a lot of friends and I've made a lot of contacts through my reporting work across the years, and they're not, you know, surprised to see my stuff. They're, they're actually excited that uh, journalists like me are able to communicate this and, and tell their stories and they don't need my approval or I don't need their approval so much to live out their lifestyle, but I want to kind of inspire others in media who are like me, and whether they're in a freelance capacity or they work for a more established media company, to not be afraid to talk to people, to step away from, let's say, what's a conventional narrative, because we see this preservationist environmental narrative, which balks at the involvement and contributions of farmers and ranchers and those who may own property, uh, those who may be you know, hunting and fishing as well. And I think you see more people uh, speaking you know, to these contributions, because why would a farmer and rancher who is tasked with bettering their land and making it profitable, but also you know, wanting to keep it in, intact for future generations, for their offspring and for their grandchildren, grandkids, uh, great grandkids to take over, uh, you don't leave a place worse off than you found it. You have to leave it better off. And so 
members of Congress respond pretty well to that message. And, and I talk to people even in media too, and, and they, they like what we're doing. And I, I hope I inspire other people uh, to also cover this and to, to speak to these really critical stakeholders as well, because they, they matter and, and they're not trying to purposely despoil the environment as a lot of people claim they are. All right. Well, I do think you inspire a lot of people. That's host of Conservation Nation with Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow, Gabriella Hoffman. Appreciate your time today and what you do.